gonna try to get a little bit of sound, see if y'all can hear the engine at all. exactly the reason for purchasing this intake but in some open filter applications you can definitely pick up a decent amount of intake noise and sometimes give the engine a little bit throatier sound who knows might change the exhaust note a little bit we'll see if we can tell it all but i definitely wanted to try and get a couple different angles of different parts engine exhaust all kind of stuff to see if there is any noticeable difference So if y'all did notice, as that super slow wind down with RPMs, older trucks don't do that. They'll pop up and go straight back down. But for whatever reason, and I'm sure it's in the tune, it just is a really slow wind down. I saw that maybe this will improve that. We'll see. Let's throw the camera up behind the truck and get a little exhaust clip, see if that changes at all. What's going on guys? So in today's video, we are gonna be installing an intake on my 2018 Silverado. And I'm sure I titled this somewhere along the lines of the only cold air intake that you should get. And we're gonna go into detail about that in a little bit. Hopefully the wind's not destroying the audio, but we can't really do much about that. So we ended up going with the Air Raid Junior. So if we look under here, we got this huge thing right here. I'm guessing this is an intake muffler. I don't know the exact terminology for it, but usually most all of them have a little intake muffler quietens it down as well as this one obviously has the uh, was that PVC routed back into it on both sides those vent the engine and it sends stuff back in here to get reburned through your intake um, this is just a it's honestly not that ugly if we're being honest it's pretty well you know it's equal on both sides appears to be so your OCD wouldn't drive you crazy with it but it's just not the prettiest thing in the world as well as it's just probably not gonna flow as good as an aftermarket one will because it's got this huge thing. You got some turbulence in here, I would imagine. Even though most of the time, your manufacturers put a bazillion hours into developing vehicles and usually they get it pretty right. And a lot of vehicles come with really, really good factory intakes and there's no need to change them. Um, but a lot of people like to do, of course, cold air intakes on your truck, car, whatever it may be. However, there is a lot of downsides to the potential upsides of a cold air intake. So when you're dealing with a truck that you're, I'm, I don't race this truck regularly. I mean, once in a blue moon, I'm not looking for an extra couple horsepower that are probably only gonna be at the top end of the engine. This is my daily driver. It stays under 3000 RPMs in most cases. So you don't really wanna go slapping a cold air intake on here because your cold air intakes can be very deceiving. If you have an open filter sitting in the engine bay, it's not gonna be sucking in cold air. It's gonna get all the radiating heat off of the engine. And then that's going straight into your engine which is gonna heat soak it because you want cold air, obviously, more dense as well, the more air you can get in there, the denser it is, the better it will perform. So when you go and these people claim, oh, cold air intake, you'll get 40 horsepower or something. For one, 90% of the time, that's with a tune. And sure, you'll get that with a tune. But for people like myself who are currently riding that warranty train, I don't want to tune the truck because that will 100% void your warranty if anything ever happens and they can go in there and see that it's been tuned and that's their loophole to get out of paying for your warranty so you got to be careful with that if you think you're going to gain 40 horsepower from a cold air intake with no tune i hate to break it to you it's just plain and simple it's not going to happen on a naturally aspirated especially truck i'm one to talk because i have 22s and 33s on this truck so that hurts the performance but you don't really want to modify the vehicle with things that hurt the performance so you go slap a cold air intake on here and you're you know, expecting this 40 horsepower, 20, 40 horsepower claim, and you think, oh, I'm gonna feel that. 
you're not going to feel a performance gain, plain and simple. You, when you're talking about 300-something horsepower, you're not going to notice. But as well as when you're talking about the heat soak issues, you're going to be getting all this radiated heat off the engine. That's going into your engine bay. So I'm a big proponent of not having an open filter unless you're actually going for true performance because you're really not going to see these gains until up in the RPM. So you're, all your power van down low is going to be hindered because you're getting nothing but hot air now. So enough rambling, let's go ahead and pull the truck inside, get this box open, show you all the Air, air Raid Junior and why I went with this specific intake. All right, let's go ahead and open up this box. And if y'all happen to see my footwear, I don't have any other shoes but my boots, so judge me. All right, so here is our full kit. This is the Air Raid Junior. So we're gonna be retaining the factory air box and that's a big thing because like I was saying earlier they put a lot of thought into these things and keeping the fa factory air box but putting a high flow filter in this thing is going to ensure that it's actually getting the coolest air possible through the factory point as well as with the high flow air filter it's going to be able to suck more and just give it better flow but keep all that heat out of it so we did go with the dried filter you can go dry or old and I have ran old in plenty of vehicles and never had any issues. You just don't want to over oil them. It can start gunking up stuff, make your sensors kind of trip out. But I opted for the dry filter on this one. It is washable and reusable, so that should be good. So these they're actually calling the valve cover breathers. And we are gonna have to do a little bit of um, installing or putting them together, whatever, uh, onto this and then hook these up. And then obviously these are our couplers just so everything uh, snugs up together and we don't have any leaks. Got some good stickers for our uh, inside the brow and that should be it so per the instructions first things first disconnect the negative battery terminal all right now we got to undo this clamp at the throttle body and then our next step is to take these little breathers off so on these they just have little push ups just going to push the push the bottom up you can see it moving right here push that up and it will slide off. Looks like this one you're gonna push down. Sometimes you gotta push them forward a little bit and then push them down and they'll unhook. Take this clamp off as well. All right, so now we should be able to remove this big muffler intake. Okay, got that on. Pull it off the throttle body, and out she comes. So here's our factory box. As you can see, you know, there's just like chambers and stuff all over. So these are typically used to quieten down the intake noise, uh, but who wants all this? So also don't see any like bad buildup or anything. I had a couple people asking about that. So let's check our throttle body. See how clean she looks looks super clean so now you got a good look at the engine bay you can actually get in here and see stuff now need to give it a good wipe down but for 20,000 miles it's still pretty clean in here all right so now we're going to take our air box lid off so we can put our new filter in there now let's go ahead and disconnect that guy and then of course gm and their infinite wisdom they have screws holding this thing on instead of just like little clamps that are just so much more convenient they probably do this so you don't check your air box and stuff by yourself you have to go to the dealership because some people aren't gonna put up the time to do this so i don't know if y'all can even see this but this one's really fun because it's right here by that i guess that's a condenser line it's right beside that like you have to actually touch it in order to get that out so once again good job jim thank you for that Lids off, a Fram looking filter, 20,000 miles, <laughs> another bird feather. That's where I hit birds all the time in this thing. So, out with the old paper filter, and then the new high flow filter, which is all nice and pretty and clean and should, you know, 
flow as good as a stock airbox filter can. Nice rubber seal on it, so it's gonna seal very nicely. All right, time to put our fittings on. So you wanna get this straight barbed one, and this is plastic going into plastic, so you don't wanna bear down and like destroy the threads on this one, so we're gonna be careful. Nothing too aggressive. It's like I said, plastic on plastic. Just wanted enough to not leak. Don't strip those out. All right, so now we gotta go to the bottom one. This is upside down, and the instructions show it needing to go like that. So we'll just put that on there and tighten it up to where it points that away. Don't want to over tighten it. So that's exactly how it shows it in the picture right there. Quick look at the difference between the stock one and the Air Raid Junior. So obviously this just makes sense that this is going to flow so much more smoothly, so much easier than this big muffle system. Just going to finagle it through here. Nice snug fit. Let's go plug that guy up too. Put the screws back in here. We'll put that coupler on. Let's go ahead and install this coupler. Put your Clamps on both sides. They're pretty loose. Let's tighten them up a little bit so they don't fall off. Make sure they're both pointed up the right direction. Want them to look as good as possible, obviously. And just work it on there. I don't think there's any specific direction which way it goes. I think it's the exact same, didn't have an arrow on it, didn't say in the instructions. So, snug it up all the way against there, tighten this down. Obviously leave this one loose because we gotta put the intake tube in that side. Let's put the coupler on our throttle body. snug fit. Make sure it's pushed all the way up against the tabs that are on the throttle body. Four of them. Well, three of them plus that flat spot. So all right, Now we'll go ahead and just take these breathers off because we're not going to be reusing the stock ones. Same deal. Push, them, push this down a little bit. Push the tab in. And pick it straight up and it will come right off down a little bit push that in and off she goes you can see a little bit of oil right there so we do have a little bit coming back through obviously that's fairly normal um if you want to make sure this doesn't go back into your intake you can obviously put catch cans on this thing so you do have to put these fittings on these obviously to go connect to the engine but we're going to go ahead for starters Put them on here so if we look at the instructions the short one is the one that goes on top work this one on there it's a little bent from being in the box bottom one is going to go just like this hopefully you can see just like this so let's go ahead and push that one on all right got these both on there and we're going to go ahead and put this on before we put these fittings on, that way we can get it exactly lined up where it needs to be and it's not twisted or any weird binds or anything. So let's go ahead and put this on. Oh gosh, my chair slid. going to be just like that. Let's see how far this one. Okay, that one wasn't that good. All right. Slide that on there. Put that back there. All 
There she is. We'll go ahead and tighten this uh, top clamp down. Try to get it straight with the other one just to look as good as possible. Let's go ahead and tighten this clamp over here down. All right, so now we gotta put our fittings on. All right, just like that. Perfect. These things, which I guess I should have put on the bottom of the intake before doing this, because I could see it better, but I'll get it on there. But these just go around here and they're just gonna go on there and a little gator bite. Pinch it down. And that way this hose is hopefully gonna stay completely secure and not, not come loose. So we're gonna put that on all four. Let's see. Supposed to be bent, which it's, I guess, gonna be, but it's a little, it's kind of a lot of pressure right there on that. But I guess this hose, when it gets hot from the engine, it'll probably kind of form form to it as good as possible. So let's put our little thing on here. Our installation is done and it's super easy. Anyone can do this. It does come with a sticker. You can put this on your airbox. If you go to the dealership a lot or something, you don't want them accidentally or on purpose chunking your new air filter. But uh, I'm gonna leave it off because I, you know, I don't know about that. But anywho, we're done, dude. So I guess let's go ahead and crank this thing up. Obviously we had the battery off, so this doesn't really require the truck to relearn anything because it's not that big a difference. But when you do this, it does reset everything. So the truck will now start up with this and learn as it goes because new vehicles do that. All right, so maiden voyage. We'll go for a quick drive, come back, give it a couple revs. Uh, you, if we have any weird leaks or anything like that you couldn't feel, we'll obviously notice that when we rev it up. But let's see. might be a little bit better obviously you know when you do something like this you kind of over exaggerate or under exaggerate it where you do it you can't really really tell because it's not going to be that big of a difference but sometimes your mind's like oh i notice a difference it's got some good little burbles going on it does that normally but it seems like it's maybe a little bit more exaggerated now which i am okay with that so here we go don't notice any difference obviously we'll do an update video once I get some more miles on this thing I reset my fuel economy we'll see if that increased the fuel economy any maybe um, I'll obviously be daily driving this thing I'll see if I can notice any difference at all in like the next couple days but let's go ahead do a couple revs in it still idles down pretty slowly. All 
All right, guys, well, that's about gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy. Um, so far, is it 100% worth it? Don't know, because I'm not seeing really any improvements as of now, but we also are not seeing any of the negatives that come with something that would probably gain you a couple more horsepower when you're romping on it, high RPMs. We're not getting any of the downfalls from having an open filter. So we're really not hurting anything. Obviously, we probably will see some performance gains, um, but we're not hurting our drivability or our efficiency with you know getting hot air in there so we're reusing this and that's that was the main goal with this this is a cheap intake i'll have a link to it in the description if you want to pick one up is it really worth getting i don't know we'll have to see we'll see if we notice any fuel economy improvements or if uh you know maybe i start hearing it more or i don't know we'll just have to see but as of right now super easy install pretty cheap doesn't void anything if we ever have to go to get some warranty work or something i'll probably just swap the factory box on there and it's super easy to swap back and forth now so that'd be no big deal so you don't really have anything to worry about as long as you install this thing right and uh should be good to go so we'll definitely have to see in the coming days or weeks whether or not we do see anything improvement wise but i don't really see how we couldn't have some better flow with this box rather than the stock one because we don't have that huge horrible muffler thing on there and I'm sure there's plenty of people in the comments calling it some different thing and saying it's dumb for me to do this and that you should do an open filter and that the heat doesn't hurt it and all this kind of stuff. But that's how I feel about it. And it's my truck. So that's what we're doing. And I think it looks pretty good under here. So definitely if you have any experience with some other intakes, let me know. Uh, my buddy John Wargo, y'all probably seen him on YouTube. He did a uh, cold air intake with open box and he did definitely notice a lot of uh, extra heat coming after he installed that rather than the factory box. So you really just don't want that. He's working on the video. Y'all can go check out his channel if you want to see it. Um, he'll upload that at some point, I'm sure. But like I said, that's just how I feel about it. And now baby squat, boy, we got an intake, we got an exhaust. So obviously we're playing the warranty game right now, but this is just a little thing, you know, can squeak by, have a little fun, maybe see some improvements and not have to worry about that for now. Next year when the warranty's out, there's definitely a lot of things I would like to do. Throw a cam in this thing, maybe do some head work, um, delete the AFM, put a stall in it, maybe do long tubes. I don't really want to delete the cats because I don't like the smell of it with no cats. And this is my daily driver, obviously, so we don't want to make it like not daily driver friendly but i think there's a lot of things we can do and it's not super expensive to um put like a cam and some head work and delete the afm and stuff on these trucks uh, that's just the glorious things about chevy life coming uh coming from ford you know the five o's and stuff really can't do that there's obvious advantages of those engines as well but uh, a lot of opportunities a lot of things you can do with the old five three to really wake it up uh, it's not anything it's not like horrible at this time or anything i thoroughly enjoy this truck but I think a little engine build would be absolutely sick coming up next year so definitely leave me some feedback down below if you have a cold air intake or you have this one or what you feel about it just your opinion and definitely let me know if you would really enjoy maybe doing a little little chop nasty on this thing so i guess with all that being said hopefully you enjoy i'll see you all in the next one